John Twist of University Motors. Today I want to do just a real brief short course on checking compression. So I'm working with a, about a 1960 MGA. It's got a uh, uh, MGB 1800 engine in it along with MGB carburetors. So the first thing to do is take the plug wires off. Now my suggestion is to mark these plug wires before you take them off unless you know for sure where the plug wires go. Most people do, but sometimes the plug wires aren't in standard formation, and that is that number one exits the cap around one or two o'clock. It can be anywhere. Sometimes they are, and if you rip all the wires off and don't know where they go back, it'll take you a while to get it going uh, because you've got uh, uh, 24 different spark plug wire combinations. It'll take you a while. Anyway, I know where these go, so we're going to take the spark plugs off. Should you check the compression with the engine hot or cold? Well, I prefer hot. This is cold, but we're, we're, we're going for it. So this is a speed wrench. Speed wrench is the greatest, greatest tool for taking out spark plugs because it's controllable. And all you have to do is hit it. We can look at the spark plugs when they come out. This one's all black but we don't know if this car has been idling for half an hour before it was parked two years ago or not. So it isn't until we take, go outside and, and take a 10 mile run at speed and then come back and read the plugs that we can decide if the carburetors are working well or not. This is really carboned up. Since electricity takes the path of least resistance, it'll jump through the carbon rather than through the gap and you get a misfire. So all these are consistent. It's what we're looking for here is consistency. Now it's, they're wrong, but we're looking for consistency. Same thing as looking for the consistency in the, in the uh, compression readings. So we've already torqued the head and adjusted the valves on this car. So with all the spark plugs out, have all the spark plugs out when you check the compression, and we're just going to go through, and I'm going to bump the car over 10 times. That's the way I do it. Other people do it different ways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I get a figure of, there of about 155. If you're older, write it down because you'll forget. Now, should it be 98? Should it be 230? It should be consistent. It should be consistent within 10%. What is the number? The number has to do with the heat of the engine. Probably some, a little bit to do with the throttle opening. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We got, oh, pushing 160 on that one. Not quite, but close. So we're well, well within our 10%. Here we come up on number three, which is the, if there's going to be a bad valve, it's the number three exhaust. It has to do with the design of the cylinder head, just the way it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And look at that, we're at 140. So this one's a little lower. Why is it low? Inlet valve? Exhaust valve, piston rings, um, the other ones have got a buildup of carbon in them and th this one doesn't. You don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 145. So we are within our spec, barely. Of course, I didn't write them down, so I don't remember what, what, what they are, but I, I think it was um, 155, 160, 140 were not in spec. Those are 20 pounds apart, and then 145 at the back. If we want to figure out what's going on, and you've got a suitable end that you can thread in here, you can position the engine and, re and move both the rockers that run the inlet and exhaust valves back them off, move them ver vertically just out of the way so the valves are all the way closed, and then pressurize this. Don't have it in gear because it'll move the engine, move the whole car, just snap like that. 
pressurize it, and then listen. Take your listening hose and listen in the air cleaner, in the exhaust, and in here, and see where you hear, hear the hiss. There should be no hiss out of the exhaust, no hiss out of the intake. There's always some hiss of the air getting past the rings. So is that too much hiss or too little hiss? You gotta check all the other ones too. So you, you get a, a feel for it. If the hiss in number three is a lot louder than on one, two, and four, something's up with the rings. So that's, that's as far as I go. I don't have a bore scope or anything because if there's anything wrong, you gotta take the head off anyway. Anyway, that's, that's a uh, fast trick. Sometimes it takes two people, somebody holding the, holding the uh, compression gauge, somebody hitting the key on the inside of the car, however you do it. So just pay attention to those spark plug wires. Till then, safety fast.